uh, Psalm 20, look at verse number 6, the Bible reads, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. And this is just that, that, that assurance. Like basically he's, he's writing from the fact of already, you know, he's prayed for the person, he knows they're a righteous person, and then you see the rejoicing, hey, God saved you, right? Rejoice in your salvation. And then he's just seeing that, that added confirmation. Yep, Bible's true again. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. Right? I had the faith before, but now I see it, and yep, now I know. And this happens over and over and over again, folks. We don't need to, uh, to be doubtful with our faith. We should be unwavering in our faith, knowing that this is what the Bible says. This is what God's Word has said. These are the promises made. Look, be righteous. Do what's right. God will bless you. God will hear you. God will deliver you. And you could know that even before it happens. Now know I that the Lord saved with his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Look at verse number seven. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. What a powerful verse. And what this is teaching here, when it says, you know, some trust in chariots, some in horses. This is human strength, human power, right? He's referring to military might, chariots and horses. And oh man, you know, some trust in tanks and bombers and, and all of this, you know, naval warfare and the ships and, and missiles and nuclear weapons and guns and whatever. Some people trust in this arm of flesh, right? But they're going to fail. And we're going to see that in the next verse. He says, but you know what? They, and this is like an us versus them. Some trust in chariots and horses, but you know, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Because God is the deliverer. God is the Savior. God is the one who we really need to be trusting in when we have any problems, no matter if it's on a really small scale with you individually in your life, or on a grand scale, even on the scale of a nation. Even on the scale of national security, or, you know, uh, Global warming, climate change, whatever, whatever, whatever the threat is, whatever the threat is, we need to be trusting in the Lord for our deliverance because the arm of flesh will fail you. It cannot save. You turn to, uh, I had you turn to Second Chronicles chapter 32. Second Chronicles chapter 32, we're going to see a great example here of King Hezekiah who put his trust in the Lord and didn't trust in, in, in you know, his own forces and in his own military might, but trusted in God to save and be the deliverer. When he was, in fact, faced with a huge army from a king who did trust in his military might and prowess and, and how strong he was. Look at verse number 1, 2 Chronicles chapter 32. After these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. So basically what happens is you've got Sennacherib, he's the king of Assyria, he comes and he besieges Jerusalem. He surrounds it round about. And they see that he's coming here to, to besiege the city. So they go, hey, we're not going to let him come and just have this great water supply so they could just basically sit out there as long as they want. They decide to cut off that water supply to make it more difficult for them to encamp around the city to try to, to defeat them that way. So verse number four says, so there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Also, he strengthened himself and built up all the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. So basically they're, they're, they're preparing their defenses. They're strengthening the wall. They're, they're, they're getting ammunition. They're getting ready because let's face it, while this verse rings completely true and we're going to see that it's completely true, you know, we're still, while we trust in God, are prepared, we should always be prepared and being ready to defend ourselves and things like that. And we do what we can, but ultimately we were trusting in the strength of the Lord to be our Savior. Now, verse number six says here, and he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him 
in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. Now, he's not talking about physical numbers of people being more with us than with him. Because obviously the people in Jerusalem were a small, ultimate, a small number compared to this massive army that was coming against him. But he explains this in verse 8. He says, with him is an arm of flesh. That's the best he has. He's got an arm of flesh. It may be a strong arm of flesh, right? Big muscles, he's got this strong arm of flesh, but it's still flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. He saw, he had faith, he knows Hey, the arm of the Lord being with you? Pfft. I don't care how big of an arm any man has, any nation has, against God it is nothing, yea, it's less than nothing. 